perfect great okay migle thank you very much migle for doing this i did i actually really felt that this would be useful for people who are going to apply or thinking about it and they don't even maybe know about the jams foundation and the the fellowship and all so please you can take us through that aspect of it what it is and your experience and tell us about yourself to start with and let's take it from there please let's try <laughs> so <laughs> again thank you thank you for having me here um and very honestly i can only say good things about about jams foundation and uh the jams fellowship um so I think I could I could start here because as Vikram very honor very rightly said uh, I remember I did I I haven't heard about jams for a very long time even though I was in in mediation world at least I, I thought that I was in mediation world and I uh, was doing a lot of things that interested me uh, so I think that's a very good kind of very good way to make other people who are who could benefit from this program know about it and encourage them to apply and maybe even shed some light on what what is happening there from at least from what i've seen and what i've known uh so the you, you asked a bit of for, for my background and how i ended up here uh so i actually so i'm a mediator a mediation trainer and a lawyer by uh training as well um i also uh submitted my defended my phd on on mandatory mediation uh so it's really kind of into that field and i was also uh serving as an expert in the council of europe sapej working a work group on mediation uh preparing one document called the handbook for mediation lawmaking and i met leonardo drusa on the same working group uh who i also met later uh in athens in the inadr mediation tournament in and he was talking with another now senior fellow of jams uh about about the application and what a cool thing jams is and i was remember i remember still standing there and saying what are you talking about jams jams fellowship <laughs> what is that and i remember both of them turning to me as like you have to apply i was like maybe <laughs> uh so so this is how i actually found out about it and i started reading about it uh and the more i read the more interesting it became so i think it was still what 2019 i think it was uh yeah i think it was spring of 2019 uh and yes and the autumn came and i collected all my recommendations and i remember talking again with leonardo and i talking to eleni charlan bidu who's who's also the senior fellow uh and she was going to the uh, us that year to to jams in 2019 and i remember she was calling me it was i think 6 am for me and maybe 6 pm for her from san francisco but i remember that call and she was saying you know that's that's literally a disneyland for mediators <laughs> there's like there are so many opportunities you can visit so many things and you can you know you can just learn so much from all the people there so obviously was very excited and uh i applied uh went through the interview process with of the board of jams foundation and them asking questions about what i have been doing up until now what's my experience what do i like about mediation what my plans are for the future for future of mediation in lithuania and very happily i was selected uh but afterwards the covid came in 2020 <laughs> covid so we actually entered into a online program uh because we could not travel to the US uh last year and we could not travel to the US this year so we had a lot of a lot of online experience a lot of meetings with different people with members of jams with senior jams fellows uh just with each other uh the group of group of uh class 2020 exchanging the ideas learning from one another and you know hearing hearing about what all the other people in mediation in, in senior fellows and the jams uh, members of jams 
what they have done. Um, so this was kind of kind of in very short, uh, this was the primary experience of what what we had uh, with regard to with regard to that those couple of years and it's still ongoing and we are still meeting uh, twice a month uh, meeting with senior fellows hearing their stories uh, judge Danny meets us himself as well and and kind of discuss discusses with us our goals and where we would want to be so very okay I wanted to be short I was not short I guess <laughs> No, this is good, good. That was really a very important. But the main thing is that the getting together, meeting people, exchanging ideas, which and it's kind of like a family, small family developing there, something like that. You know, I think I think the thing about it, so what I like the most about it, it's very inspirational in a sense. Because you see you see people from literally around the world, because some of the criteria and you know, I think Graham, we can we can add yes. like open open up that page to yes, for where yes, people can go and find all the information about it, the application process. Uh, this is what it is. That yeah, see what it is. Up. I think it's it's pretty easy to Google that and just entering Jams Foundation and Fellowship. Yeah, if they come across my post, it is the link is there also. Whatever. See, so the everything it's everything is there. In this also, I think in the YouTube thing description also the link is there. So. So the idea being that people who are wanting to do things in their country come to the U.S. and they actually study whatever they want to do, whatever activity that you can tell us what all they can do. And at the end of the day, they go back to their countries and do what they wanted to do. Yeah, right? I, think, I think that's that's the point. It's like one of the criteria is that you have to be outside the U.S. And, you know, uh, the more you read, Jams is one of the biggest or maybe the biggest provider and mediation provider in the world so they are looking into into these people from literally around the world and you know it's like the, the most important interesting thing i guess now with these with these online meetings is that you know somebody's calling almost in the middle of the night and all on the san francisco area is connected and, and you know i don't know 7 a.m i guess just to meet us and just to talk to us but this actually shows how literally people from around the world are there uh, and it's very it's very inspirational to see all of them to hear their ideas to to understand why they entered into the program why why they like mediation and what they are planning to do so as you said it's kind of it's it's, it's a kind of tight relationship where you you know and i think jams is doing a very good job trying to introduce us to more and more people uh, again who are interested in mediation to kind of keep keep the contact and if you have questions to be able to you know have that have that kind of list of people where you could go and and talk to them okay so last the last date i was just trying to i just stopped here to say the last date for applications is the 19th of november now look at let us look at Miguel's name in the list okay this is oh. these are your this is your cohort so how's, how's it been interacting with them how is i mean you want to talk about that all these people from all over the world i think they are coming from very different backgrounds but this is what makes it interesting and i guess again that's kind of that's the nice point about about this foundation and this fellowship is that it's not you know you you come and you just apply to some kind of a prepared plan that you're going to be doing it's absolutely not like that you come in with your own experiences and it, you know it doesn't matter if you are in education and maybe you are you know a lot of people there are lecturers in universities who are as well taking into account tdr from kind of educational perspective maybe you are a practitioner uh, who has already uh, you know, a lawyer and a mediator. And there are a lot of people like that as well who have their own businesses, both kind of law firm and then doing mediations as well. Uh, there are judges in this cohort uh, who are very interested again in kind of implementing mediation in judicial mediation in, in the court system. So they're primarily are judges, but very much interested in mediation and trying to bring mediation into the, into the judicial world. 
there are also people from the public sector who are actually working with the governments or you know attorney general offices trying to implement mediation from kind of public sector uh, interested in implementing laws on mediation and all of these oh, on people working in you know international organizations who are also working in projects uh, that are kind of dedicated to uh, spread the knowledge about mediation in in more countries in in Europe and elsewhere so I think this is this is the kind of the very interesting part of it is that the people are coming from very different backgrounds but they all have kind of the they have similar and at the same time different goals. And again, I think one important thing to note is, and maybe for those who are planning to apply, um, it's not directed only towards mediation. There are people who are much more interested in aid in, in, arbitra uh, in arbitration. So it's not that you're like just specifically for mediation, I was specifically interested in mediation, uh, but it's not, it's not that narrow. And, I think, again, kind of the main myth, I'd say, is that, you know, you had to have, like, have conducted a lot of mediations in, in the past just to, just to be selected. I think that, okay, I cannot, of course, I cannot speak on behalf of JAMA. That's just everything I say is just my kind of uh, personal, personal experiences or how, how, I, how I see things. But... But yeah, it's like, I think what they are looking at is actually your passion about mediation. What have you done so far in, in a sense of what you, you know, it's not necessarily you have to perform like conduct mediations per se, but I think you can further it in, in a lot of other means and other directions. So that's, I that's just, it. I just stopped here because Judge Shimak's session is already out there on the YouTube channel. He's already recorded his session on this. Of course, he's like for him, it's like been the most wonderful experience that he's had, and he's the, he's made friends for life. So that's the important. And I'm just putting it through so that we know that I'm just telling you that these people are already have already put out their sessions. So where else? Whom do we have? We have Tat from Singapore. Where is he? Okay. See how many people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know. But, I mean, this is, I think, good enough. I think what we've got, I've got. So, Tat is here. I asked Chitra also if she gets time, she will record hers. Because we have a discussion on the mediation bill that India has come out with tomorrow with her. If she gets time, maybe. And we had a meeting with her last week. She was presenting and talking to, mm -hmm. talking to the 2020 cohort as well. So that's kind of that's again as well what I'm talking about. You kind of can come in and hear the people who came 10 years ago and see, you know, coming in from just doing their LLM maybe in the US. Uh, so Tat Lim's session is also up there. I don't know, have you met Tat? Yes, I have. That's a very wonderful person. I mean, completely agree. <laughs> so, and then we can, Katarzyna also, I think tomorrow or day after maybe we'll record her, record hers. Are these already there on this, on the channel? So this was just to tell you that, okay. So anyone in travel, out of all these people in your cohort, anything, anyone in specific that you want to talk about anything about any of them, the work that they're doing or. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess like, again, they're all, you know, they're all very, very wonderful people. I cannot, you know, it's like. As I said, they're kind of different, different that they have different approaches for, let's say Monica and uh, was Hisham. I think they're both judges. Uh, and their interest in mediation from from that perspective, uh, Lilith and um, where uh, oh I cannot see it. Lilith is here. Right? Oh yeah, Khadi Khadija. Uh, so they are both working in kind of public sector. Uh, Lubomir is working with an uh, international organization that are implementing projects on on mediation as well. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, Nan Tuyan uh, has his own practice. Uh, I think that uh, Nami also has her own practice. So, you know, these are, these are all people who are coming from very kind of from very different perspectives towards, towards mediation. And of course I cannot, you know, we still had only, that's, that's kind of our 
the different experience we had is we haven't come to the US. So you know, we were not going to the to the universities, even though actually back in 2020, again, since we, so kind of my plan uh, was to, to try and go to mediation courses to observe uh, mediations and, and jams. I was also looking interested in peer mediation. I wanted to uh, as well observe some kind of observe some lectures in the universities. So uh, I was in contact with UC Hastings in, in California. And even though I wasn't able to come last year, they still allowed me to uh, just watch their, uh, like observe their, observe the lectures, some of those of that, that have been interest, of interest to me. Uh, so even though we haven't uh, kind of, we haven't traveled, we still got a lot of experience from that already. So with regard to the people we are meeting daily, we still haven't had that in-person experience. So this is, this is why I was saying that, you know, our experience will still be different from, from those people who were able to go to the US. And I'm really hoping that with 2021, 2022 cohort, uh, that they'll be able to go to the US and experience all of it, of course, based on the based on what they want to do, if we want to go to lectures, if they want to obtain a degree, if they want to just go to some courses, if they want to observe lectures, if they want to, you know, go to some universities and do some research together, that's that's completely up to them of what they want to see, if they want to, you know, come back to the country of their origin and, uh, and establish their own mediation practice. Or maybe they're just interested in, you know, building a judicial mediation scheme. Uh, so it's very much up to them of how their experience will look like and and the people that they are going to work with. But but from your end, I mean, whatever you've been able to, with the interactions and all, how have they helped in your work in Lithuania? I think it helped me to see a very different perspective. And... Uh, I think I felt because so last year I started as well my own company I started doing mediations in Lithuania uh, so I think for me it was kind of the support system then kind of to have that group of people to share the ideas with them to say what I'm planning to do and I was also then you know, preparing team for mediation competitions so it was it was a great support system being able to to listen to them, to see what they have accomplished. And I think this was my kind of, at least from the last year, it was really, I think you can feel rather alone as a mediator. <laughs> so having that, having those people around you is, I think is very important. That's something I can't say, you know, feeling alone as a mediator is <laughs> enough. No, you can't. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> no, but, but in terms of the approach that you saw, I mean, whatever you had seen earlier in Lithuania and the approach that you saw of the various people from other parts of the world, did you see some differences there, specifically what you could have utilized in Lithuania or things you would not be able to use there because the differences in approach? I mean, was there something like that that you noticed? Mm -hmm. I think we had, I think I remember we had kind of an interesting conversation with regard to judicial mediation. Uh, and then, uh, as I said, Monica was very interested in of implementing that in, in Poland and kind of pushing for the judicial, judicial mediation there. Um, and I think, I think we, because in Lithuania we had like mediation is pretty regulated by now. Uh, so it was very interesting to, to see of how, you know, how certain things that are implemented in Lithuania already and that are being, that, you know, some other countries maybe are looking into implementing, you can share those experiences of what could work and what doesn't. So, so specifically, we're talking about, you know, uh, making judicial mediations free of charge. So in Lithuania, uh, judicial mediation, uh, parties can obtain it free of charge uh, for four hours. Uh, so they, they can they can have it. Uh, but then we were kind of talking if you know it's like it doesn't seem that the people value it exactly. that much then. So you know it's like it's a very kind way to just you know try to make it 
free of charge so people wouldn't be afraid to use it but then at the same time you feel that they are not they are not value maybe that as a as a product and they just want to sit through it so you know i think i think these are the very important things and you kind of you see what worked in your country in practice and maybe what other countries are planning to do so this is so we had this discussion there was a lecture by mr akisanya from nigeria at 5:30 india time so we were actually discussing this aspect of how the court system is actually for me i've always been saying i don't know whether you followed any of the symposium sessions that's one thing that i've been always been saying that that's an issue which we have to deal with because obviously the judiciary is strong enough to implement what they want but at the end of the day the profession suffers and mediators are not going to be on the street with their banners and slogans and all that they're not they're too decent to do that so it will it will the profession ever develop the way it should i mean these are things which we have to keep discussing i think we'll have to keep doing that so you know it's like in lithuania let's say so the mediators are being paid uh by the state but then the pay has a kind of cap of how much so we discussed this we discussed this and i said look the mediator should be paid at least as much as the supreme court judge because the settlement that the person does is a final thing because there is finality to it and at the other end only the supreme court just gives you something which is final so they should be paid as much if not more <laughs> so that is what my discussion on this aspect has been you yeah, avoiding <laughs> three instances right at least exactly exactly so and i'm saying that the fact that like you said valuing people ultimately comes down to money is an important aspect in society now the way we the we structured our societies and mr akisanya was saying that the fact that a, when a mediator walks into a court room or a court house he should be as respected as a lawyer who's walking in with a wig and the robe and everything why should that be different and people don't like you said if they're not being paid they're not looked at in the same way so he was saying that there were some people who think oh this guy is paid less than my clerk also so i mean those kind of feeling look money is something which ultimately kind of decides social hierarchy also so maybe that those are things we we have to start talking about i i, I have of course spoken so much about it and i've decided i I've, i've done my speaking for this <laughs> other people have to now start taking it over okay but that's a separate issue about your experience yes yeah, and i think both both of them have good points okay so that's so okay so we do, now we need a diplomat also to give us that <laughs> no. so, so otherwise it's something interesting in terms of the experience people anything else that you want to talk about yeah. i think what i really want to talk about is kind of encourage people to as i get and again you know we we've talked about this i as so it's like i don't know if i'm the right person since i haven't been to the us but i think you made a very good point uh, is that you know we still had a great experience even though it a different experience but we learned a lot and what i what i think I think that sometimes we don't see all the possibilities that are out there <laughs> and maybe sometimes we just limit ourselves uh with regard to what we think we can do what we deserve what what we didn't deserve and I think that for those people who are really passionate about what they're doing it's really worth to apply but also but also think of what you know not only what they can get as a person from it but also what they will be able to give back when they come back so i think these are kind of i think it's maybe it's even more important to not not to you know what you have done up until this point but what you are willing to do in the future based on the experiences you get so i think this kind of this one is a very important point and also when we talk about that maybe sometimes people are just overlooking possibilities it's the same it's the same thing with thinking of what you could do in the us <laughs> there are a lot of things there are a lot of organizations and you know i remember when i was applying i called several senior fellows and talked about uh, their experiences what they have been doing but you know so i think even when you're talking with some some people just kind of get the idea of what they did and somehow in your head there is that path that maybe you should do it in a similar way but actually no there are a lot of a lot of possibilities of what is fit for the 
for kind of the lifestyle and the professional experience up until this point. So I think that's that's the second thing that should not be overlooked is that people are in, in the US, at least from my experience, they really they have her jams, they know what it is. It's a very respected organization. And usually when you say that you are applying there and that you would want to you would want to come and do something with our with uh, with the people you are talking to, they are actually very welcoming. <laughs> and they respond and they uh, talk to you just because you know that you know if if you if you are applying, they know that you are really motivated to do a lot of things. Well, how I was looking at this and why I was doing this one was that people do talk about mediation and they want to do things, but if you're actually applying somewhere, then you have to be sure about what you want to do. So you'll put down thoughts which were just at the back of your mind, you'll put it out there and then you'll see where where things are going in various parts of the world and the US, of course, they look at that. Because from this, what had happened, of course, this was only to put out the information. Then I was, I was what I was discussing with you before we started the recording, that I feel that there are so many people out there wanting to do such good things. And obviously, funding is becomes a problem for them. So, and in general, of course, mediators not getting enough work. So that also is an issue. So let's, with the people who have these interesting ideas, I'll put that out where people come up with this thing and talk to people who can actually fund. And I, again, let me tell you, I should say this or not, not call it fellowship because fellow being something which some people in the gender aspect might have an objection to. So call it something else. I haven't thought about it. <laughs> Before you brought that up. Oh, I, I, so I because when I saw that I said, look, let's let's stay away. Let's use neutral words. Let's not do this. But whatever the word will be. But I felt that a lot of people who would want to support young people or not young people who want to do something interesting in in mediation, they would want to fund them take them forward, whatever way. So, so that's what I'm going to start doing. I've already started speaking to some people that how they would want to get involved. So I said, this was something interesting which came out of this whole process that I was doing. So I think, mean, let's see how that, that goes. That's a good item as well, right? Yeah, it is. It is actually, because I, I did not ever think that it would go that direction. It was only, okay, let people get to know about something which they would not have. So people from various corners, small towns somewhere in some part of the world, getting to know that there is something like this. I just felt that was good. I mean, why not? It's not about, I, I ultimately, it's not about getting something. It's not, okay, I, did I get the fellowship? It's about finding out what it's all about, getting your thoughts together in a concrete manner. Okay, this is now what I want to do. And then not just, if not, you don't get a fellowship, but at least you started thinking about it. You've imagined something. And if you've imagined something, you'll take some steps towards that direction, How whatever those steps would be. So I felt that was what kind of can come out of it. So that's how it is. Yeah, and you know, I think kind of adding to that, and you know, it was like I don't know what you what you said about that. You know, a lot of people are looking to the U.S. as because they have a lot of long, let's say, long history uh, of mediation. But I also think that that's that's the thing that you can learn from different cultures yeah. I, you know it's like a couple of weeks ago i think we're talking with a senior fellow from ecuador who was talking about mediation in ecuador and i you know i, I based on kind of my experience i was mostly looking in in mediation laws in in europe so i kind of understand what's happening there but then i heard from her how like mediation is apparently a big thing there and i've never about it and I remember I think from after ICC mediation competition last year so I was I was training a team there but then I was talking to one other trainer from Colombia who also is there apparently they have mandatory mediation and then you can you can see all these different examples how it could work how it could be applied in different settings so I think that again at least how I've seen it is that, you know, going to the US, it's not that you will learn, and I will put it in kind of air quotes, the right model. No, you will see a model that is being applied and you can learn from it. You can pick up the kind of what works for you, what could work for your country and take it back. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, you have to copy something that you see, but you can 
learn from all those different people that you meet. So at least at least kind of that's the appro approach I'm looking in with, with that I'm looking into it. So because with the symposium and otherwise also because I was speaking to people from all over, you get to know interesting things that are happening in different countries. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the symposium, there was someone from Ecuador. The only issue was that his interpreter was really bad. He's, we've tried it twice. Both the times have not been good. And I feel really sad because he's very enthusiastic. He runs something called ODR Ecuador. So he's mm -hmm. doing a lot of work there. But the fact is the interpreter was an issue there. So that's a problem. I, I will want to maybe record re record that. Then Colombia, we, I was it was I had something called a dialogue series. So I had this pa pa Pablo from Colombia. We had a of course he also he speaks only Spanish. So I had Alexander from Brazil doing the, the translation there. So he's come out with an interesting thing that they have something like a restorative justice concept in schools. So there's an act on that. There's a law on that. So that was an interesting thing that came up. So I mean, I mean, it's various things are happening in various parts of the world. So I think with these conversations, at least you get to know something very interesting and some countries may be far ahead of in what they're doing i mean mm -hmm. we, keep, we keep talking about us maybe for me the, like you said this model thing uh, this is this person from uh, indonesia shadia she hers, hers is one right now the last session which has been recorded mm -hmm. that's what we were talking about this she said let's develop an asian model of mediation so we are now going to start working on that aspect that okay asian why not european why not african Let's have our models which we create there. So talk about it at least. Let's see how it develops. So I have to now, of course, get to Shadia, talk to Shadia to actually put it down in a concrete manner. So, I mean, these are the things that come up and how we should take it forward. And I, I find it really interesting that there's so many interesting people out there wanting to do they have these nice thoughts. It's just a matter of getting them together. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And sitting on one table in one corner of the world, I'm able to do that. I'm very happy about this whole online thing. Just really... It's really amazing. So, so what else? Is anything else that legally what you feel that how people can benefit and maybe on the application process, something on the application process? Yeah. yeah. So I think first of all, it's again understanding that there are kind people in this world. <laughs> what maybe maybe sometimes we forget, uh, and you know, from all these it's what and a one and a half years, so I've applied exactly two years ago and then you know from the selection process but from what we've seen the whole jams foundation was taking such a such a good care of us uh you know planning all the meetings planning all the literally joining sessions 7 a.m uh texting from what for them i guess it's a 5 a.m but just to make sure that everything happens smoothly so I think that's just incredible to be surrounded by such people who care that much. And, you know, I think you just, you just feel grateful for their kind of, for their <laughs> caring about you. And um, again, it, it kind of really, uh, it really helps you move forward in that, in that sense. So I think, uh, I think that's one thing. But with regard to the application process, so uh, I think it's pretty clearly described uh, about uh, described in the in the website. But I think the things that to take into account, so I think it it closes in nineteenth of November. So what is it? A uh, bit over a week. Um, Again, I can only I can only see on personal things. <laughs> Cannot speak uh, on kind of behalf of anybody else. But I think it's very important again just to try to show what happened up until this point. But really, really think of what you are planning to do in the future. What? How will you apply those ideas? <laughs> what are you trying? What will you? at least at this moment at this moment how you would want to implement that so i think these are at least i think these are the most important things and i guess what scares a lot of people is uh and i've had people coming to me with some questions is kind of understanding of what you so what you have to do in that in that time do you have to get a degree there uh, do you i don't know have to be an intern in some organization or something like that so i think again should just broaden your minds it doesn't it doesn't have to be a degree but it could be uh just i think people should be mindful to the fact that the application covers up to uh, four months 
and up to twenty thousand dollars. So, in many in many universities in the U.S., the let's say LLM costs much more. But I think again, there are other opportunities how to obtain the funding from other sources. So I think that's one thing. And then, really, writing to people and and talking to them. Uh, with regard to what, what could be done there. Small organizations, universities, people are open. <laughs> people are open and they're usually willing to talk to you and kind of hearing what you have done. Um, and I think one thing that scared me in the, in the beginning of the process uh, was just kind of trying to understand if I have to have kind of have the exact calendar <laughs> when I am applying, so at least my understanding was not, <laughs> you, you cannot know, right? Before you, you know, you cannot commit to anything before you're even selected. So I think the most important thing is to kind of try to establish those contexts with the organizations that you would really want to go and do the research on those, on those organizations, what can happen there. And then lastly, I think, again, Vikram, you made a good point with regard to, you know, young people not young people uh but there are people of all ages <laughs> uh, who are applying so it's not that you know you have to be straight after school or that you i don't know have to be 50 <laughs> to apply it doesn't it doesn't go down to age it goes down to experience and what you want to do so i think these would be kind of the main and recommendations those as well. Like, like what you said also that, that generally look, people with a media mind mindset are good people, wonderful people. They will always reach out. We will always help if you reach out to them. So people can reach out to Migle. She will definitely help. And uh, Liliana is thankful that you helped her or guide her, whatever you told her. So that's oh, what we it was very it was I, I was so glad when I, the people who the senior fellows from previous years they agreed to talk to me. Adi agreed to talk to me, Eleni agreed to talk to me. And that was so helpful. So, so now you are part of that senior fellows. People are going to reach know, out to you. I don't know if we can call ourselves that. Almost, I don't know. Almost, you're getting there. <laughs> on, on the way. <laughs> no, no, I think no, that's okay. But that's what I'm saying that people help each other. If you reach out to them, they will definitely yeah. do that. Migle might not reply to in two, three days. She might take some time to reply to emails. <laughs> yes. But she will. <laughs> but correct. she will. That's correct. <laughs> So I think so we done on the jams part of it, but in terms of the relationship with the jams foundation, what happens after that? Do they have something that you do in your country with them as, as jams? That's not my understanding. You remain the part of that family. You remain the part of those meetings. And I think after that, let's say half a year, it's not a half a year, but still you, you kind of have the support system, but it doesn't mean that you're, you know, opening a jam center in your country or something like that. You're just pursuing your goals that you wanted to pursue. It's either you come up with your own mediation practice, or maybe you implement courses on mediation, or maybe you come up in a judiciary, uh, you know, uh, implement a judiciary system, or maybe you help uh, draft laws on mediation, or you know, go and represent your country in uh, international negotiations on conventions. So that's all the story that we've seen from you know senior fellows uh, of what they are doing, but. You know, Jams is not looking. I, at least, my understanding is that they are not looking for for people to open their offices. So that's their model. And what what is what is the next interesting thing that you are doing? Now, in general, in general, yes, something interesting in your mind, something, some plans, some something to promote mediation. Anything interesting there? Trainings. <laughs> um, so just just yesterday. So I think I. No, I think I still, the, the lecturer in me <laughs> is still there. And, uh, you know, just yesterday I've been uh, reading a course, kind of introducing law students to mediation. And, you know, the further I go, I think this still stays in my heart, the kind of the education part of it. Um, so I think, I think this is kind of my main, main focus the guard to mediation. Because I, I started this lecture series. I don't know whether you know about that. This lecture series, the idea was that there are so many people out there 
Of course, you, I don't know whether you've read about it. Okay, let me, what I'll do is give me one second. Let me, I've started doing this also, taking people through what I'm doing in November. So let me just do that, take two minutes and that, and then I'll tell you about the lecture series there. Of course, life starts with this. That has to be put out, has to be put out, has to be put out. <laughs> okay, so Adi's done this. He's already done this. It's on the channel. So if you can watch that. And Adi's a wonderful person. I, I'm sure if you reach out to him, he will help as much as he can. That was my experience and I'm still very grateful for him. Oh, no, he's a wonderful person. He's been on my other show, then Conversation with the Beautiful Mind. We have a nice conversation there. Of course, he's part of the symposium. It's just lovely talking to him. It's just... Then Tad, of course, again, lovely person. He's, a, he's been part of the lecture series also. He's been in the evolution of a mediator also. And of course, the symposium. I mean, it's just nice people to just be with. Then Dutch remarks, we've done that. And then your experience, there's number four, actually. Okay, this is the idea behind the lecture series. So the concept being that there's so many people out there who I've been saying have the natural ability we should reach out to them. They would never ever maybe go for a lecture on mediation. Where would they get a, a chance to do it? So let's put it out. Let people take these lectures out of the mediation world. So there is, of course, the mediation world and you're training people to be whatever they, that's happening. But let's take them out. So that was the idea behind it. So I, I mean, I talked to you about that all, all after this also. Of Michael Lang, of course, another wonderful person. So his lecture happened on the 3rd. Then she is going to be recording hers and maybe tomorrow, today or tomorrow, or day after, maybe. Then this was in conversation again, a wonderful person. Of course, you helped her, guide her. So she has good thoughts and what she wants to do in her city, Rafaela, in Argentina. And we, this lecture just happened today. Again, I mean, nice conversation we have had after the lecture. So maybe whoever wants to watch that, please watch it. It's on the channel. Bernie Mayer is a very senior mediator and because very, there are certain things which I, I mean, I want to discuss with him at maybe first episode might not happen, but his concept of creating a collective, he created a collective and they worked together for many years. They were actually doing something. So the idea being, how does a collective function? What are the issues which come up and the individual and the group and the dynamics between the two? So that's good, should be interesting with him. Gunavati, again, wonderful person in Malaysia. I, I, what I'm trying to do is in the lecture series, not talking about, talk about countries. They're, they're beyond countries. They're lecturers. They're, they're, that is, should be beyond countries. So I haven't mentioned that here. Is that okay? No, very honestly, when I was preparing all the, the handbook for mediation lawmaking and even my PhD, at sometimes at some points, I was able to talk more about laws in other countries than in Lithuania, <laughs> just because that was my point of interest. This is what I read. So I think all of these people are you know they they know much more just what's happening in their countries yeah but but i'm just saying that the lecturer's country should not be important so i've removed that i'm not talking about it they are universal they, they have knowledge to impart all over the world okay michael this is interesting i mean the work that he does on reflective practice very interesting i mean the, in the sense he has these groups all over the world where they discuss their experiences so what on this episode he's going to have those people coming in some people from these various groups and parts of the world and they'll kind of, they'll have those discussions that they have as part of the group. Book gets discussed as part of it. I get to get to know about a book because I don't read them. So for me, it's something something extra that I get. And then of course, you can buy the book at a discount. I don't get anything out of it. Okay, so please let me give that disclaimer. So you have to have that hashtag of advertisement, correct? <laughs> so it's not. Fake content. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, Kathy Potter, interesting. I mean, work that she does, her session in the symposium. Also, you must see she's been on evolution of media. This is the part two of her, I think part two or part three. So her thing on music and mediation. I mean, you know, this is an art and mediation. So that session of her symposium, please have a look at it. Very I mean, interesting person, nice person doing interesting things in mediation. Rafael, the one who designed the poster, I have to keep saying that he's, that's his claim to fame. <laughs> so he comes in. And then Andrea, she's also part of uh, Michael's Reflective Practice Group. So that's been nice. And the last day of the month is for celebrating the birthdays of mediators. So that is, okay, 7.30 is what is, it, um, that's kind of the time I would like to keep every last day. So that's just a way of getting people together to just, so that is what it is, right? Correct. So, so anything that you have to say on 
these events. I'm sure you don't get to watch any of them because you're very busy, but at least they're out there. A lot of having from during my working hours, <laughs> so I cannot join live. But did you manage to see? Do you manage to see any of them on YouTube? No, not this one. I not was, you know, going through the uh, through the um, con in conversation. Yeah. <laughs> You've been on it. You've been on it. You cannot. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying that people should actually. What I've been saying these days is, please share. Please share these videos. Get send them I did. Out. I did. I did. You did. I'll have I did. Nah, you know the one you've commented on it. Okay. See, we talked about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So it was just the only thing. I mean, was, like I said, hundred people in the symposium. If they could share each other's sessions, ten thousand shares, and <laughs> each of them average, if they have a thousand followers, imagine the number of people we reach, which is not happening. That's the place where things have stopped. But this is okay. This is beyond the experience. We'll talk about it separately. I won't crib on the show. <laughs> so so we, we had that conversation last time. Exactly. Style. Exactly. So I do that cribbing all the time. <laughs> So, any concluding remarks, Migle? Whatever you want to apply, to apply, apply. Look into this program. Just look into look for the opportunities. As you can see, a lot of people are uh, willing to like, willing to help, willing to talk, share their experiences. So, I think just going out there and trying to do those things. And I, actually, there's one thing I forgot to say. So before before we conclude, I just remember how fast time flies. But you know, even even in the online setting that we had last year, so Jams managed to make for us to attend conferences on mediation, courses on mediation online. Uh, you know, with Pepperdine, with different institutions and even from a distance we are still able to learn that much so just you know just imagine how much you can learn being there in in person i can i can just encourage you know 120 percent to to apply and try and okay. and go for it <laughs> yeah main thing is to be out there just do whatever you have talk to people whatever needs to be done but on the fact of webinars and all the information that are out there on my youtube channel there are lots of playlists so i put a lot of webinars which have happened in the world in the last one year more than that they're all out there with a lot of resource that hundreds of hours of programming is available so please watch those there's lots that you can learn doesn't matter i mean fellowships will happen but there is lots to learn otherwise also right agree so perfect so thank you very much Miglia. Very nice of you to take.